Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We're going to be working on a stencil uh, die for a disc. And so we got a Buzz OS. Looks pretty nice actually. And uh, my friend wanted this. And so it will not have the line around it. That's just to show you. And my printer is pretty crappy. So it has a little bleed. But I wanted to kind of give you an idea on what it's going to look like. Again, it's not exact here. I went ahead and uh, cut out a Cricut for it. So I'm gonna go through all the tools and the supplies that you will need to make this happen. And I'm doing a new uh, way of doing it. I'm gonna use a heating pad and a pan. And so I'll walk through all the tools and the supplies on how to do this. First thing you're gonna want is a design. Uh, you can choose really any design off the internet and cut it pretty easily on a Cricut. I'm using 5160 by Oracle. And this is a transparent paper to help me be able to see a little bit better. Sometimes I'll even draw along the edge just to give me a little bit better view because it's really hard to see. And it's going to be even harder uh, when we get it on the transfer paper. So you'll need transfer paper. This is basic transfer paper. I just put a big old circle around it pretty much where the disc is just to help line me up a little bit better. So those are really the Cricut things that you'll need. Um, you want some kind of scraping tool, some kind of pick of some sort. Again, I said I used a Sharpie occasionally. Um, you're gonna want some scissors because we are going to use I Dye Poly. You're gonna want some kind of a mason jar. I would encourage you to get a solid lid for it. It just seems like they last a lot longer. And so we will not be using acetone in this bed. Uh, we will use some acetone to get the stamp off. So you'll need some acetone, some paper towels. And then I just have, this is an old pan that we had and it works like perfect. And so you can just like literally set it down in there and you don't need a crap ton of water uh, for your mixture. Uh, I do have it pretty full because you do lose a little bit. Um, and then we have a heating pad. This is just a standard heating pad. I just turned it on right before I started this video. So just start to get it warmed up. My garage is freezing cold right now. It's about 32 degrees in here. So um, stuff is already frozen because sometimes you'll see me pull these things frozen solid. Um, even my Dawn dish soap and water, which we will use at the end to kind of clean up the disc um, just to make sure. But uh, that's frozen as well. So I'm just going to scoot this over. And so what I like to do is go ahead and get your area set up for what you need. And so I'm going to scoot all that. We're going to start here. I would encourage you to get some warm water. And we'll go ahead and pull this open. Take this beautiful color intensifier, throw it in the trash. This is what we're looking for. Now these can just be thrown in if it's super, super warm. Um, I'm only gonna use about half of it, so I am gonna save it and I'll have a Ziploc baggie to put the other half in. And so I'm just gonna take it and kind of cut the end and try to guesstimate what half of that is. So half a bag, this is the, the full size one here. And so we can save this for later, which is pretty awesome. So whenever you run out of black dye like this, you can always come back to it. And I like to just go ahead and stuff it right back down in there for a future use and put that off to the side. So we're gonna go ahead and cap this. Then I always grab some paper towels because you can see I've spilt many times on this beautiful table here. But uh, just try to save yourself some headache. So now that it's nice and tight, go ahead and shake that up. It's really pretty simple. Just a few shakes is all it takes. Stir it up nice and well. See, that worked really well. And you can see how dark that is. And again, that was kind of warm water because we are outside. I don't want it to freeze on us. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and actually put a couple of paper towels down because we are going to erase this entire stamp. Um, I asked my buddy whose disc this is what he wanted done. He said the whole stamp. So we're just going to jump into it and erase the whole stamp. I like to use paper towels for this. You can use a number of things, but... Uh, Paper towels seem to work well, and they're disposable. If you have an old t-shirt or something, it'll work well too. And you just start kind of rubbing it, and it just magically disappears. 
this actually is a pretty cool uh, design on this. There's not a lot of character to it, but there's just enough that it kind of gives it a cool little feel and look. And if you didn't want to go with black, you can really choose any color. Um, I just have a couple colors up top right here just laid out. So if you wanted to go for more of a blue or a red, you just pick that up. And I'll have links in the description on all that if there's a particular color you want. Um, you can probably click on that Amazon link and get to whatever color that was that you desire. They come out with a lot of them. I will say that darker colors tend to work a little bit better. Um, but that's just kind of my opinion. Try it yourself, see if you think anything different. So, I think that looks good, nice and squeaky clean. Now, typically what I would do is uh, spray some Dawn dish soap and water on it right now, just to make sure it's clean, but it's completely dry. You can actually, if you want to, just really test it there. That looks good. Um, you can still see if you look at a slight angle, the uh, leftover of the stamp. I don't know how you get rid of that. If somebody knows, let me know. I don't know if you really can. Um, that's like the impression that the, the stamp leaves, but it's kind of nice too, because if you forget what your disc was, you can just look there. But if it's a disc craft, you can also look on the rim, Buzz OS. So that one is set. We'll go ahead and set that up here. Gonna move the paper towels out until later. Next thing we're going to do is to go ahead and get our design. And I do like to set my design up so I can see it. So whatever you need to do to just kind of have it in the background. The next thing we need to do is go ahead and pick the parts that we want off. So any part that you want black, and this one's gonna be a really easy design. You can see it's a transparent one. I do wanna make sure that center dot stays. And just like that. If you wanted to save this and use this for another one and have kind of a reverse, you definitely could do that. Uh, I probably would have used transfer paper when I was doing it instead of just pulling it off like this, but definitely something you could do. Um, or if you just like want to slap it on somewhere, now it's on the back. You can't even tell because it's see-through. It's right there if you really wanted to know. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and take this and uh, we're gonna get the disc uh, pretty much ready, but we have to use transfer paper first. The main reason we're using transfer paper is this dot in the center. This one should be super easy to do though. Except when it's cold, this thing does like to curl a lot. So sometimes you do have to find like something to help hold some of the sides down or at least a side down. So now that you get that, you can go ahead and move that off of there. I'm not super concerned about any wrinkles on the transfer paper. We will make sure all of the wrinkles are out on the other though, but the transfer paper honestly doesn't matter. The big thing it's doing is pulling up. And again, what I could have done, and I probably should have, is actually uh, colored the, the other with some Sharpie so you could see it. Um, once you've done this a couple of times, you don't have to worry about doing that. So we'll go ahead and peel. And this is always hard to do with gloves on. And make sure you wear gloves when you're dealing with this, especially the acetone. Um, it is not super friendly. And you can see it is so transparent that sometimes it's hard to tell if you even have it up. Which that did all come, you kinda can see it, but not very well. So I'm gonna show you that. Maybe you can see it at a little bit of an angle. I probably should have colored it, especially for video content, but you know what, life happens. So. Now, this is the, the part that actually really does matter. Trying to get this perfectly lined up. I'm gonna start in the center and kind of work my way to the edge. And I will say that it was not perfectly lined up on the transfer paper. I tried to get that center circle lined up on the center here. And you normally do have an opportunity, if you do mess it up, you normally can go ahead and pull some of it back up. But I actually think I kind of like where it's at. I'm gonna look at all the different, the different angles. I think that looks good. 
And so this is where you really want to make sure you put some elbow grease into it and get this thing nice and on here. Other thing I like to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the transfer paper right now. And this transfer paper I use 5, 10, 12 times normally uh, before I ever throw it away. If you're working on a really, really uh, tight design, sometimes I'll just get a new one out and then use this for one of these kind of bigger designs. And you can see it drop that dot in the center, which is exactly what we wanted. And we'll just completely pull that out. Now, like I said, I do like to save it, get the waxy side and you can put it back down on there and save that for another beautiful die. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over and just begin to put it on just like this, wrapping it around. The goal of, I like to do of wrapping it around will really just make sure that none of the die comes up and over the edge. It also matters on portion control too over here. So that looks pretty awesome right there. Now I'm gonna come back and really make sure along the edges here we are good. This is where it really matters that you got a nice clean. Now I'm not worried about a bubble in the center here. I'm worried about the bubble on the edges. The edge is where it really, really matters because you don't want it leaking through. And so you can go lots of different directions to make that happen. So like I was saying earlier, if you want to do really any design, if you have the Cricut machine, you can make almost any design on this. Big thing is lining it up, getting all the air bubbles out right here. And you can make some really awesome looking stamp dies, stencil dies technically, not stamp. We erase the stamp MC fix it. So once you think you have all the air bubbles out, go back like four or five more times and just make sure you actually do. And because this is a new setup and it is starting to finally get pretty warm underneath there, um, I'm not certain how long it's going to take. Um, typically, I only let it on there for about 15 minutes if I'm doing this on my stove. Uh, but we're cooking a bunch of stuff right now. And uh, so we don't have the stove as an option. So I thought I would try this method as uh, just kind of an alternative. If you don't have access to a stove or you don't want to get your stove with uh, black dye all over it, which is very easy to do. And that's a good way to have your roommates or your spouse uh, not like you for a while. So uh, do whatever you need to do. And maybe this will be a, a helpful method to you. So that's pretty good right there. We're gonna go ahead and move this into the center. Again, you should feel it, it should start feeling warm. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take it. I'm going to open it in the center, remove the cap, grab a couple of paper towels. You can actually see it. It is barely starting to steam just a little bit on there just because it's so cold in this garage. And I wanna make sure it is filled on the bottom pretty much completely. And I'm gonna wipe all that beautiful blackness off. And go ahead and cap it up. I think you'll be able to see some of that steam on there. I'm not certain. The water wasn't that hot, but it is just really cold in my garage. So my fingers are not moving as well as they normally do. I'm doing one last time. I'm looking over the whole thing, making sure each and every one of these little areas does not have, there's a little air bubble right there make sure those are gone that's how you're going to get a nice clean edge which everybody wants well at least i do maybe you don't i like a nice clean edge 
And most dies are never perfect, but they almost always turn out sweet. Now there's a couple of other things you can do here. You could have taken some of this and actually kind of pinched this up. I've seen some people do this before to give you a little handle. Um, you can use like blue tape if you have blue tape. So a lot of times I'll just take, and I know I didn't show this at the beginning and I should have. You can just take like a piece of blue tape and almost make yourself a nice little handle. You just kind of get about a six, seven inch piece. Uh, then you literally just make a handle out of it. And so again, I want to make sure I got liquid in the whole thing. And then I'm just going to slightly put it down in. And I think that looks good. You can also like pick it up to make sure and it does look really good. It's not going to hurt anything if you pick it up for a few seconds. I'm going to let this thing sit for an hour. I will come back and show you what the final results look like. Okay, it has been one hour. I'm going to go ahead and pull the heating pad out just so I don't spill anything on it. And uh, we're going to make sure we got some paper towels laying around because we don't want to ruin anything. Make sure your work area is nice and clean. And as we begin to lift this off actually we want some more paper towels it's going to get a little messy but kind of pick it up and lean it over top of the hot bed and uh, you can see that that definitely is warm and this is just getting all of that potential dripping off and uh, you still have a chance that it would like get caught in one of the seams like it could right there um, go ahead and set it down and we're going to go ahead and move off the the liquid in the pan and I don't know if I put a funnel you may want a funnel it really does help make it a little easier um, to just pour the hot liquid in and so this is just a little cheapo funner funnel from the Dollar Tree and uh, we'll just go ahead and pour this in probably would have helped if I put paper towels underneath as well but you know that's life sometimes you just kind of forget to do things and so um, no spillage yet, so that's a good thing, and uh, we'll just go ahead and hopefully continue to have no spills. Looking good so far, and you can wipe out your pan with a paper towel, wipe off the side you just came off of, and uh, overall it doesn't look too bad. Uh, I would not put the lid on this yet, uh, but uh, actually my alarm just went off, so it truly has been one full hour and uh, just make sure you're nice and clean for your next one um, it's easier to get the die off now than later again do not put the lid on just set that off to the side it is very warm my garage is very cold you wouldn't want your glass to break and that to go everywhere now the next thing is after you get more paper towels you're going to need a lot um, we're going to go ahead and start peeling this off and so it is clear transparent so it is a little hard to see so just start getting some of the edges and pulling up and just keep pulling and keep pulling and keep pulling and you'll take off the blue tape as well if you put that on there and you'll get to the point that we'll get to reveal this which will be pretty sweet and if you see any uh, residue on there any dye you can wipe it off pretty quick and normally you are pretty good and so we'll just keep peeling and you'll get to see exactly how sweet this thing turned out. Um, I've never done it on a bed like this before, so this is kind of new. Um, I've done it on the stove before, but just using a heating pad for one hour actually worked really well. You can see there's a slight imperfection right there. Um, I'm not too worried. Um, if you want to take some acetone and hit that up, you definitely can and that would help uh, just kind of get the ability to have that look a little better and we're going to peel off that centerpiece don't forget that it can be easy to forget um, and right there that looks pretty awesome very very bright that would look really cool as it's spinning through the air especially if you have some kind of like drone to capture some footage on that or if you're somebody who likes to spin their disc i'm not very good at that um, on their finger that would look really really cool um, as you're playing and so i hope you guys like this if you guys do have any comments please leave them below thank you guys so much for watching if you've not subscribed yet make sure to do so